Emily from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for January 2022. So we have our very last astro event taking place on Saturday, January 29th. What is that last astro event, you may ask? Well, it's a pretty important one. We have Venus, the goddess of love and beauty, worth, value, happiness, and joy coming out of her retrograde. She is going to wake up. She is going to go direct. She has reached the very top of this very dark bottomless pit that she's been in for 40 days and 40 nights. And we are going to have to see a huge shift, not only within ourselves, but on the collective level. We're starting to see it. I'm very excited to talk about it. But first, let's rewind. Venus, of course, rules over Taurus and Libra. So my Tauran and Libran friends are definitely feeling this aspect a little bit more so than other people. And of course, Venus has been in Capricorn emphasizing the life lessons for my Capricorn and Cancer friends. But all of us are definitely getting this particular energy because when the goddess goes retrograde, we have to review we have to reevaluate. What are we reviewing and reevaluating? Well, first of all, our worth, our self esteem, our self confidence, our relationships, our freaking values, and our money matters. That is what Venus typically rules over. So let's back up. Venus first entered into Capricorn November 5th. Okay, now when Venus moved into Capricorn, she puts her business hat on. She ain't messing around. She's not all up in her feels, although she does have a lot of feels to review and reprocess and reevaluate. She puts her business hat on because Capricorn energy is the boss. It is our highest place of authority. It is our power placement. It is also very karmic in nature. So Venus entering into Capricorn on November 5th, we weren't messing around. We had some very serious review to do, some very serious actions and movements we have to take. Why? Because we're tired of devaluating ourselves. We're tired of being put in situations that we know we don't deserve. We're tired of living on the dark side of our shadow selves because of the pain and the trauma that we accumulated as kids moving up to adult positions, not realizing that the trauma is locked in our physical bodies. So she came into Capricorn on November 5th with a freaking mission. She entered into her pre-shadow period on November 17th. This is where things started to slow down. I like to actually give you analogy. I always look at retrogrades, regardless of what planet's going in a retrograde, as getting drugged, okay? So she essentially swallowed the pill, if you will, on November 17th. This is where the effects started to come in. Things get a little bit groggy. She's slowing down. She's seeing life from a different perspective. Then on December 19th, coincidentally, right before we had that huge solstice activation, that huge portal that fast forwarded us through an accelerated manifestation process that we are still very much dealing with. She went retrograde at 26 degrees. So now she's essentially drugged. She's essentially asleep. She moved into the underworld. What is the underworld? It is the shadow part of ourselves. That's why many of us have been going through another series of the dark night of the soul. She goes into her darkness. She did a dance with Pluto. Okay, Pluto, the ruler of the underworld, ruling over death, total destruction. Why? Because you got to get rid of the junk in order to create a space in order for the new elements to actually be birthed, actually be reborn. This is a huge transformation. But she had to sit at the bottom of this dark pit and she was scared and she was sad and she had to strip away the, la the layers and the mask of the ego in which she's created in order to survive. She essentially sat in the bottomless pit of darkness, 
hoping that somebody was going to come and save her. And what happens when we reach that point in our lives? We recognize that nobody's coming. Nobody's going to save us. We have to save ourselves. So essentially, we sit in our funk, we break down, and then we reach this beautiful point of no return where we muster up the courage, the boldness, the bravery to recognize the power struggles that we've been dealing with within the self-confidence, the lack of self-confidence, the self-esteem issues, the lack of self-esteem issues. And we're taking a good look at what it is that we love, who it is that we love and what it is that we're not getting enough of in our daily lives to reach that level of joy and happiness. There's a huge evaluation going on. We're sitting in the bottom of this dark pit wondering, hmm, I pour all my energy and love into all of these people. How come nobody's looking for me? How come nobody's coming to save me? And the halfway mark of that around, well, let's just say we moved into the fighting our way out of the dark pit just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, typically speaking, Venus spends 40 days and 40 nights in this pit of darkness in her retrograde in the underworld. She is now making her way up out of this pit. We've been in a purge cycle, a releasing cycle, a surrender cycle since January 19th. And now on the 29th, we're reaching the very top of this bottomless pit that we've been in. We have gritted our teeth. We've dug our beautiful manicured nails into the earth that surround us. We have lifted our own weight. We have motivated ourselves. We have inspired ourselves to be better. This particular energy is wrapping up a karmic life cycle. We are essentially being reborn just as Venus is reborn as a morning star. You're going to start seeing her very, very bright up in the sky early morning. This is going to be a beautiful energy for us because the reevaluation that we've been doing with our relationships, with our values, with what is worth our time, energy, love, and effort. Who is worth that time, energy, love, and effort? Everything is changing. We've had some very pivotal aha moments while Venus has been in retrograde. And now, reaching the light, being reborn, rebirthed, we are having this beautiful illumination on what needs to change. So she is coming out of this dark pit at 11 degrees. What do we know about 11 11 is a master builder number. What do we know about building? Well, we're in the year 2022. This is a building year. If you haven't checked out the 2022 energy forecast for the whole year, I would definitely recommend that you go do that because we are totally in alignment with bringing some very serious changes and transformations to our physical realm in order for us to be in alignment with our higher selves. What is our higher self? It is the highest potential that we can possibly reach in our soul's evolution in the here and now. So let's talk about this for a second. She is going to be in her post shadow period until March 1st. That's how long it takes for the drugs to wear off. That's how long it takes for her to get her bearings. We will start seeing the power struggle shift. We will start seeing the changes in our physical realities and on the collective stage change in order to be in alignment for this empowerment that is going to take over when we enter into March. Now, I know you're saying, oh my goodness, we haven't even gotten into February. Why are we talking about March? February is going to be a stellar, stellar energetic time. Can't wait to bring you that forecast. Please stay posted for that. But here's the thing. This has all been a setup. We can't jump into major change just willy nilly. We have to really have a pivotal breakdown before we can break through. So let's talk about the relationships that have begun while Venus was in her shadow period and while she went retrograde. Those are likely ending now. If you had a breakup, regardless of how long you've been together, if you had a breakup halfway through this retrograde, it's likely not a clean break. You're going to have to revisit that and provide some closure provide a final ending to that as Venus comes direct. We have a very beautiful, brilliant, 
opportunity here to create a new space. We have to understand that Venus retrogrades in the sign in which she retrogrades in every eight years. This particular Capricorn energy we were experiencing eight years ago. Now, the last Venus retrograde that we had was actually in May and June of 2020, but that was in Gemini. That means that we were at odds. Our heart and our head wanted two different things because many of us were awakening to the next level of our ascension while our partners decided to keep their heads in the sand. There was a great divide. Now, for those relationships that survived that and are still surviving this particular Venus retrograde, you're likely reaching a new level of commitment and intimacy if you are in a conscious relationship. If you're not in a conscious relationship, you can expect the pain and the trauma and the suffering trauma bond cycle to continue until you wake up and choose better for yourself. This is what these retrogrades are all about is us bossing up. You will get the next cycle to review in 2023 between July and September when Venus retrogrades in Leo, the heart and soul of the Zodiac. You best believe there is another level, another transformation coming, a huge change of the heart when Venus goes retrograde in Leo. So what do we have to focus on right now that she's coming direct? First of all, gain your balance. Take your time, gain your bearings back. We have had a lot of realizations, a lot of powerful moments while Venus was retrograde. And now we have to piece them together in order to make the kinds of changes that we know our higher self needs us to make to be more in alignment with what it is we want, what it is we need, what it is we deserve, what it is that makes us happy. And most of all, what it is that mirrors back to us the newfound level of worth and value that we found in ourselves. So we're wrapping January up with this very monumental energy shift. You're definitely going to feel empowered. It is going to take us a little bit to get up to speed, but this is a beautiful setup for the energies that are coming in February. So definitely stay posted for my February energy forecast.